everyone. Um, I don't have as pretty of screens or uh, slideshows, but we're going to go through a bit of a live live demo. Um, I'm glad the prior one was talking about lazy loading because we're going to be talking talking a little bit about that as well today. Um, so to begin, we're just going to take a look at this super simple demo app. <clears throat> what we're going to be doing here is dynamically rendering components um, into the DOM using the view container ref um, through observables. Um, so here what we have is the red box is just the normal container. Uh, the orange is a box that's going to be using the view container ref and then rendering components into it based off of the query params in the URL. So we can see if we choose query one, this is actually a component that uses a view container ref to render internally um, inside the, the div itself uh, rather than using uh, the selector uh, directly. So you can see if we switch it, it goes back and forth. Um, so how does this work? Um, one of the drawbacks uh, I've found with dynamically rendering components is if they have dependencies, then those dependencies need to be defined somewhere else um, in you know a module, uh, whether they be in the root or the component you're, you're using here. Um, but if you want to lazy load entire modules and only render those components uh, in certain cases, then you want those dependencies to be possibly um, isolated out into the generated bundles, right? So what's happening here? We have just our basic selector, and then we have this dynamic outlet right here that loads this component in. Uh, this is essentially just a component factory, uh, depending on if you're running it locally or um, if you're actually compiled using Ivy. Um, it'll be a little bit different, but we'll look at that in a second. What this is doing is on the right, here's the component code for it. We just have this view container ref, and on factory change, it will load the outlet so it'll clear it first so that we don't double up the the components if you don't clear it then every time you reload it there'll be a new record below it um, and then we just create the component with the factory this factory is pulled from the observable um, from a library so let's take a quick look at what is happening there so here is the get component factory this i can show you here uh this is the query param component so this is what's actually being async into the Rx dynamic outlet uh, component. Uh, and it has, it's listening to the query params, which then pipe that value into the get component factory, which pulls from a manifest, which we will talk about in a second. So back to the service. So what are we doing here? We take the component ID, which in this case is being pulled from the query param, but it can be from pretty much anything you want. Um, I'm pulling it from crew params. You could pull it from an NGRX store or route params, pretty much any observable or string value you can use to pull from the manifest and then render that manifest. So this works very similar to how lazy loading of routes works. The configuration for these manifests looks like this. So that probably looks super familiar if you've used the Angular router, right? You can either use load children, which will um, build its own uh, bundle for that module, um, or you can use the module directly. So this is what we are using to reference uh, when we pull from our query param, build our component factory, and then async that into the component. So back to the service. So we have our manifest. We pulled that based on query one or query two from the, the selector dropdown. We call the load children function, which is this here, right? Or this. So it's either a promise or it's not a promise. We then pipe off of that. Um, we can use promise to re resolve to make it resolve regardless of if it's a promise or not, um, and then turn that into observable. So here's where it differs a little bit if you're if you're using a compiled bundle or a not compiled bundle. Because if you're using a compiled bundle, so it's built with you know, optimization or build optimizer, et cetera, um, you're going to have the ng module factory already. Um, if you're running it locally, so just with ng serve, uh, then you actually need to use the Angular compiler, which is injected, to compile that module so that either way you get the ng module factory back. Once you have the factory, uh, we can create it using the either passed in injector, um, if you want to override the injector, or just the base Angular injector. At this point, we now have a module ref, which we can then use to find the component that we're going to try and render into our in our component. 
uh, which has a provider of dynamic component because modules can have multiple components, right? They can have multiple declarations. Um, so this means that we need to tell this library what one we're rendering. At this point, we have our comp dynamic component type. We can resolve the component factory and then return that back, which would then return here, which is an observable. And then that emits, we async it into dynamic outlet, and then it's rendered into the div. So um, yeah, that's how you render component modules. Um, and if your module that you're rendering, like these ones, have, de have dependencies, that's totally fine. You can import them into that module and they're loaded at module ref, ng module factor creation time. Um, yeah, so that is how you dynamically render components uh, with dependencies based off of observables into the DOM. <laughs>